Good morning, and we thank you for joining the Come As You Are Ministries on another beautiful and great Sunday morning. We thank you all for all of your continued prayer and support of this ministry. We know the last few uh, Sundays we've been having a little technical difficulties and things of that nature, but we pray that this morning that we got all of that worked out. So, as we always say, this is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We thank God for his wonderful blessings and his mercy that he has shown up on us. We thank God for just being God and being God all by yourself. Good morning. We're glad to see that you all are on this morning. We, we thank God for all that he has done, doing, and going to do for us. We pray that God is working in your life this morning. We pray that God is doing some things in your life that you didn't even expect. But hey, the God we serve works that way. So let us get right into what God has for us this morning. We look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Father God, this day we thank and we praise you, O oh God, for just allowing us this great and glorious opportunity to come before you, this your people once again, O oh God. And as always, Father, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Father God, we ask you, O oh God, to help us all to stay focused on your word, your will, and your way. Lord, we ask you to speak through us and to us right now because, Lord, we all need to hear words from you. Father God, we ask you, O oh God, to just shower down on us right now. Let us feel your presence. Come on in, Father God, and fill this room. Fill these rooms, these houses, wherever everyone may be listening to the sound of my weak voice. Father, just come on in and let us hear from you. Not from Magnil, but we want to hear from you. Father, God bless us this day. We love you, we honor you, and we adore you. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We're looking at the subject today. Just keep pressing. Just keep on pressing. Just keep on pressing. There are days and times in our lives when we just want to give up. We just want to throw in the towel. Seems like nothing is going your way. Your mind is so perplexed and your heart is heavy. But I just want to encourage you this morning. Just keep on pressing. Have you gone through at any time in your life when you felt like you just couldn't do nothing right? Everything you tried, it just didn't work out. Your mind was just all over the place. You were dealing with so much you couldn't think straight. But I came to tell you this morning, the Bible said that the Lord will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. So what does that mean? That no matter what you have to do to stay focused, stay focused on God, on his word, on his will, on his way, each and every day. See, we must know that the devil wants your mind. That's what he wants. He wants to control it because if he gets a control of your mind, he got you. In other words, that means you're under his control. You're going to do what he wants you to do and how he wants you to do it. But the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. In other words, we should be focusing on the things of Christ, trying to do and say just what God would have us to do and say. We can't let our mind be boggled down with what's going on in this world. There's a lot of stuff that's going on around us. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in this world that we can't let our minds be boggled down with. That's where prayer comes into play. We can't let our minds get messed up with what people say, think, or feel. We can't do that. Let them have their attitudes. Let them act the way they want to act. Don't let that derail you from doing what God wants you to do. We have to keep pressing and we got to keep praying because if you stop, you're stuck. You say, Reverend, what you mean you're stuck? If you stop doing what God wants you to do, you're stuck in a place. 
to where you don't know where you're going. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's your next move. You don't know what you got to go, where to go from there. So you're just stuck. It's just like when you follow the GPS and you get grown and don't want to listen to the GPS system anymore. Now you're in a place and you don't know where you are. You don't know where to turn from here. You don't know what direction to go in. You're just stuck at that stop sign. You're stuck at a four-way stop and don't know which way to go. And a lot of us in life, we are stuck at the four-way stop of life and we don't know where to go. Why? Because we stop listening to the master GPS system and we start listening to everybody else. That said, they got a quicker way. They know how to do it better. But if the, at the end of the day, if you had a quicker way and you knew how to do it better, maybe you wouldn't be sitting at the same stop sign that I'm sitting at. Maybe you would already know where you should be going. Have I got a witness in here? We have got to keep on pushing. Because when you stop, like I said, you're stuck. Don't let your physical or mental conditions hold you back from doing what God would have for you to do. Because if God called you to do it, he will equip you with what it takes to do. Don't let people stop you from getting to your breakthrough or your blessing. Just like the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 verses 25 through 34. Very familiar story. We all know it. She didn't give up because of the cry. She didn't give up because of her physical state. She kept pushing. She could have given up because she was hurting, but she kept pressing. She could have given up because she was weak, but she kept pushing. Why? Because she knew her blessing was on the other side. People couldn't figure out what she was doing, but she didn't let that stop her from getting to her miracle. And we must do the same thing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Why? Because the more I keep pressing, God's going to give me the strength. The more I keep pressing, God is going to show me where I need to go. God's got a blessing and a breakthrough, a healing, a miracle with your name on it. It's got your name on it. That's why I like the way Tasha Cobb say, there's a miracle in this room with my name on it. There's a healing in this room and it's here for who? Me. There's a breakthrough in this room and it's got my name on it. So why, as long as I know that, I'm going to go head on and do what? I'm going to put a praise on it. Why? Because I know God has everything that I need. He said, just like the woman, the man, the lame man in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. He said, I may be lame and I can't walk, but I'm not going to let that stop me. He called his friends and they came and got him. And when they came and got him, they took him to where Jesus was. When they got there, you know the story. There were so many people hanging around there. There were so many people there trying to get a blessing, trying to get a breakthrough. They could have said, well, hey, man, we don't come as far as we can. The door is blocked. The windows are blocked. There's no way to get in. We don't know what to do. They could have let the press stop them. They could have let the people stop them. And a lot of us, that's what we're doing. We're allowing the crowds to stop us. We're allowing the odds that look like they're stacked against us to stop us. We're allowing our mind to control us and stop us from doing what God has called us to do. We're allowing our physical state because some days, yeah, we're going to be tired. Some days you're going to be weary. But the Bible said, what? Look to the hills from which coming your help. All of your help come from the Lord, in the name of Jesus, everything I need, he will supply. They got right there. They saw the crowd, but they didn't let that stop them. They knew that there was a way. And if there's a way, God will show them. Just like people always say, well, there's a will, there is a way. And God will provide the will and the way. They went on top of the house, took the roof apart to get the lame man down to Jesus. That should be us today. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Just keep pressing. Job didn't quit, nor did he give up in the midst of his trouble. A lot of us, we're in the midst of some things, and we want to give up because it seems so hard. We want to give up because our minds are so perplexed and they're all over the place. We want to give up because we feel like we don't have the strength to fight on. We want to give up because we, some of us are in the Job state. It's one situation 
after the other. We get the husband straight, the children start acting right, act, messing up. We get the wife straight, the dogs start acting crazy. We get the house straight, the job start acting up. We get the job straight, finances start acting up. We get this straight over here, something is always breaking loose on the other side. It's one problem after the next. When you think you've gotten yourself straight, your mental state start acting up. Depression starts setting in. All kinds of stuff starts setting in. You can't make it. You're not going to be able to do this. You ain't got the power to do that. You don't have the strength or the knowledge to do that. Something's always setting in. Your back start hurting. Your head start hurting. Your toe messed up. Something is always going on. But I stopped by the team. God's got the power. If you just keep pressing through what you're dealing with, keep pressing through the trouble, keep pressing through the pain, keep pressing through the heartache, God's got a way of fixing just what you got going on. That's why Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And then he came right back in Job 14 and 14, and he said, out of all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change come. In other words, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to turn my back. In other words, he says, I'm not going to give up now because I know that I know that I know that God's got me. Glory to God. Somebody need to hear that. God has you in the hollow of his hand. He's got you covered. He's got you protected. He's got you taken care of. So stop worrying. Stop fretting. Understand and know that God got the power to do anything but fail. You, you need to understand and know that. So when you want to give up on God. When you want to let go, when you want to, when you can't see your way, when the pains get so bad, when your mind is so perplexed, when your heart is so heavy, when your trials and tribulations seem to be taking over you, just keep on pressing. Don't let what the haters, the caters, and the debaters say stop you. Just keep on pressing. Don't let nothing keep you from your blessing, your breakthrough, or your miracle. Just keep on pressing. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Some days I want to give up because I can't think like I want to think. Some days I want to give up because I can't focus on things like I used to. Sometimes I want to give up even on preaching because of this old crazy disability that I got. But that's when I realized that man's extremity, <laughs> glory to God, man's extremity is God's opportunity. In other words, when you begin to realize that we can't live, move, or have our being without God, when we begin to realize that we can't figure it out, on our own, when we begin to realize that finally through our ups and our downs, if we hold on to God's unchanging hand, God will make a way out of nowhere. It's in those times when you should cry out, Lord, I need you. It's in those times when you get to the point where you just throw up your hand and you say, Lord, I can't take it no more. I can't fix it. I can't work it out. Lord, I need you to step in. And it's in those times. It's in those troubled times when you get to that point. He will step in and make everything all right. He will step in and turn everything around. He will step in and open doors for you that you never thought would open. He will step in and he will close doors that don't mean you no good. He will step in and move those people out of your way that don't even have no business being there. All we got to do is keep pressing. Don't give up. Because you got to understand, if the Hebrew boys had to gave up, in the midst of the fire, they'd have burned up. If Daniel had to give up, gave up in that lion's den, he'd have got ate up. But the fact of the matter is, even in the midst of all of that, they knew who to call on. They knew who would work it out for him. They knew who would change things for them. Well, the clock on the wall says that's all. It's been real fun, but Rev. McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, Crocodile, but somebody still really don't understand what I'm saying because in your mind you're still saying, Well, Reverend, I've been dealing with this for so many years. I, I've been dealing with this problem. I've been dealing with this issue. I've been dealing with these folks. I've been dealing with this job. I've been fighting with this for the longest. I've been fighting with depression. I've been fighting with my physical state. I've been fighting with my mental state. I've been fighting with all of these demons that I got going on. I, what, what, you keep telling me to press. I, I'm pressing, but it seems like nothing is happening. I need you to understand stuff doesn't happen in your time. It happens in God's time. It's not about you, but it's about him. It's not about your might, not about your power, but by his 
spirit, by his strength, by his power, says the Lord. In other words, I can't fix it. I can't do nothing about it. I can't change it. But I know somebody that can. And because I know him, I stay hooked up with the sword. It's not about the resources. I stay hooked up with the sword. Because when you're hooked up with the sword... I Great God Almighty, now, when you're hooked up with the sword, he'll put the resources where they need to be. He'll make sure everything works out just the way it needs to work out. He'll make sure that everything turns out to be just the way it needs to be. All you got to do is keep on pressing. That's why I love those songs that tell you don't give up, don't give in. The battle is fixed in your favor, all you got to do. Is understand that I'm going to win. Why? Because God has my back. Somebody needs to know that today. God has your back. Don't give up on those children. Don't give up on that marriage. Don't give up on your mental state. Don't give up on your physical state. So know this. The God that we serve has all power in his hand. And he'll do anything but fail. All you got to do is trust him. Even though you can't see him. Trust him. Even though sometimes you feel like you're all by yourself, trust him. I promise you he'll come in. He'll wrap those arms around you and he'll let you know that everything is going to be all right. So for those of you that today that have felt like me sometimes, you felt like you wanted to give up, keep on pressing. I trust, trust and believe God will give you the strength that you need. He'll give you everything you need to make it through. Don't give up. Don't give up on that project. I don't care what the folks say about you. Don't give up on the project. If God called you to do it, he will equip you to be able to do it. So don't worry and don't fret. God bless you all.